Welcome everyone to exercise number 18 and in this I would like to show you how to create maps from templates so if you're just um, confronted with data and you already have a map and you have to arrange some things in it I would like to show you how to open the template how to adjust the visibility on your template how to adjust maybe also the uh, the grids in your template or your map over here and um, how to how to draw lines in them and make some annotations as well so but first of all I would like to show you how this is working so what we will need for that lesson is something called um, a layer toolbar you can find it using customized toolbars layout and well it looks quite the same as uh, the normal uh, toolbar so the tools toolbar I think is it uh, but what is what is the difference is that all these zoom in zoom out pan zoom whole page buttons and also f and so forth so far functions will just operate on your working paper so on the map and not on the on the on the data behind that so if i'm just zooming in here on that map you'll see that the scale over here will be the same uh, but this is totally different if i'm using course the data um, zoom function here and so I'm just go out again to Asia so how to um, how to control this um, is well a little bit tricky especially if you're panning around or zooming and you want to have a fixed scale of 1 to 100,000 or something like that to make it easy uh, e to make it easy to read uh, and also maybe to measure in a, in a field campaign so you don't want to um, struggle around with the scale of 1 to 3876 because you cannot ca um, calculate your distances very well so how to do that you can you, um, just have a look on the on your uh, on your project here and go to properties of the data frame there you have of course the general tab uh, we can adjust the reference scale which is actually used but you also can uh, have a look here on the data frame and uh, search for this this one called extent and set the extent to a fixed scale let's say here in this case 1 to 10 million okay here we are now 1 to no no this was the wrong one used separator okay here we are so there's a scale of 1 to 10 million and you are not allowed to zoom anymore here in this map uh, and in the data view for that so um, we are fixed to the scale so this is one possibility to control your scales let's switch it back properties and say automatic so but as you can see we are working here in the in the sub chapter 18 a and we would like to concentrate our map on the uh, on the islands of Fili of the Philippines so here they are but what you can see now in the map is uh, that there is a little problem in the build up of the map so the uh, distance of the grid is way too big so what we will do for that we will just um, change that system so the system is quite fine if you're zooming to the whole page uh, no zooming to the whole extent of the map you can see well this is the whole earth let's go back to the extent of the Asian continent which was the first one yep. this one the grid is quite fine so the distances of the grid are not to the the, the um, yeah the system is not too dense and not too um, not too far away from each other so, so you can easily differentiate uh, all, all these grids but if we are zooming in here to the Philippines there are just two of them visible so how to change that is you can or you go to the properties of the data frame go to grids and there you have already a gratitude cool grid but you can adjust the properties of that so you will now be forced with the dialogue using axis interior labels labels and so on but um, yeah, how is the um, how is the intervals of these grids? And in our case here, these are ten degrees. And by changing that to five degrees, you make it much more easy e easy to be read. So five five 
degrees quite fine you will have a um, proper grid for your map so you can also adjust the title of the of the map so this here is the title you can insert a title as well so just press insert say Philippines hope I'm writing it correct yeah no, double double P sorry for that Oh, that's great. So, um, I'll just skip that, press delete, and double click on Asia and say these are the Philippines. So, here we are. Now we have changed, changed the name of it. So, next lesson will be how to add X and Y data. So, uh, in our example, we will add uh, locations of um, locations of hurricanes. And then these time these are typhoons. Um, yeah, so just press on add data as we used it before quite a lot. Go to your folder, to a working folder, go to data. And these are this is just a text file. You can easily extract text files from your GPS or from common data on the internet uh, or from Excel. And so we are now here in the in the list by source view mode. You have here the lat long etern um, text file, which is uh, the way or the path of a typhoon in the year 2003. No, um, yeah, something like that. 1992. I don't know. Let's have a look here in the map. Yeah, probably somewhere in the in 19th century so but don't be on the uh, focused on that details you will have your latitude and longitude so um this text file just is a text file as a plain text and there's no coordinate system given and so on so what do you need to do is you need to um view these latitudes and longitudes on your map and do that properly so just right click on that one and so and uh, say display x and y data First, yeah, you will be. You need to define your longitudes and latitudes. Normally, this is done automatically and very correct. But if you're, if the, um, if the um, columns are not named properly, they, you will find some problems in that um, transformation from x to longitude and y to latitude just by the name. But what you need to do as well is you need to edit the coordinate system of the input coordinates in our example here we don't we uh, we probably don't know that or we know that it's a total different from the Lambert conif uh, conformal conic one uh, here for Philippines which is the data frame property so we will go on select we have geographic world WGS 181984 uh, just press on OK and OK once again. But we will have a look here on show details so you can see the details of your coordinate system. Just press on OK. And here are our um here are our part or the path is path the path of uh, this typhoon. And you can just of course here the symbol, let's say here, maybe we will find something lo for typhoon. take some time but maybe we have just write it properly with a double O. So, um, looking here, we can. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a friend of that um, weather um, symbolic view, but in fact, you cannot easily see where the typhoon was, so you have to change the scale or the size of that marker to symbol level number four. So now we are seeing the way of the typhoon, but um, yeah, 
what else can we do with that? We can adjust the line through that one. So um, how to do that? There's a possibility to open up a special toolbar for that that is called Draw. You have several uh, drawing features like text ones, uh, rectangles, but also curves. So what we will do is we will get a little bit nearer to the map. So this is the area we are looking at. We would like to draw a curve through that. So um, just by marking the me uh, the the centers of the typhoon. So there we are. And what else can we do? We can do a lot. Uh, we can do a call out over there. So this is something like a text annotation. So just click on. Um, on text and call out. Make a call out for here and say this is a way for well how do they call it? June 5 12 a.m. one hundred seventy kilometers per hour. Oh no. So this is a call out here. Sometimes you need to refresh your map if it isn't shown properly. So this is the one for the start maybe and let's have a look and using the identify button uh, for these points you can have a look here. So this is the speed and have a look here on the end. This is June this is the third, six AM one hundred five. So you can also, select that callout, pressing Control Z, uh, C, Control V, adjust the location of the callout, and easily ad adopt your callout scheme. So I think that was 6 a.m., and it was a speed of 105. Just press on OK, and now you have. Um, very really easy to read map for the way of the typhoon. So this will be there. So we are now looking at good located positions of these callouts. Oh no, I don't want to change the position of the map, just want to change the position of the callout. So there's the callout. Use it over there. And this one a little bit higher as well. So let's have a look on the whole map after all. So therefore you can use the zoom to whole page view. But there's also the possibility to make these zoom to 100%. So this is a way um, or it, it calculates and then the correct map from uh, the resolution of a screen. And so this will be the map uh, at the end. So maybe we need to go a little bit deeper to um, have a coverage of Manila in that map but we are not interested in, uh, in the whole Philippines so just to get a good view but now you see what the what the main problem in these annotations is if, if you are changing the extent of the map or the location you are uh, these uh, annotations or these drawings on the map aren't changed as well so we need to go back now to the last extent that these drawings are fitting to our map content anymore so now arrange or adjust the title way of the typhoon e tang well it is said to be a path we can adjust that as well so the format is is fine you can of course change the uh, the um um symbol for that so you can easily choose r really strange uh, types here and um, just by pressing OK you will have a new 
uh, title over here. So changing symbol and take a new symbol size of 18. And now you're having here the title and also the main interests of your of your map. So there's the scale bar. You can easily adjust the scale bar in its size. Um, normally this would be this type and not up to 680 kilometers because it's a little bit strange. So let's adopt that to 600 kilometers or better to represent 500 kilometers. So and there are also information about the coordinate system, so Lambert conformial conic projection and standard parallels is 12 uh, degrees north, central meridian is 122 east and this is fine now um, to be drawn or to be printed out. So how to do that, just click on file and save uh, or click on export map now you have to choose which data type you want to use. I would suggest you to use EPS or Adobe Illustrator format. Maybe also PDF to keep the vectors quite nice. So we'll now just use EPS and saying, okay, I would like to store it on the, on the ArcGIS tutorial path and exercises. Then you have to decide where, which resolution you would like to have and whether or not this should be clipped to the graphics extent. So we will stay with that. We don't want to rasterize the layers with bitmap. We would like to vectorize layers. And just press on OK. Now the map is stored. Let's go into the um, used folder. Exercises. And there it is. So let's have a look on that map. Well, that was not that fine because the true type wasn't found in this in the system, so we will just close that again. And let's try it with another format. So once again export map. Say Adobe Illustrator. Clip up to extend. Resolution is very high here with uh, 600 dpi's. It's good to go with 300, that is fine for the most uh, applications. So, file is written. Hope the fonts are represented fine in the moment. No, they aren't, so that is quite a pity. Um, So if you're forcing or if you're if you find that kind of problems, it is better to switch either the uh, fonts or just stick with a very simple um, system. So exportation to um, TIFF file or PDF. Let's try that as well. I hope now this is working. Sorry for that confusion. So this is a very nice looking map, and by adjusting the uh, the um, density, so the resolution maybe to 1,200 dpi or something like that, you can also use that as a good example for drawings and for um, for printing out, and also to make posters out of it. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.